When it comes to honest opinions about Manchester United, nobody is more cutting than Roy Keane. He's always honest, to the point, and sometimes very, very harsh. And not everybody agrees with what he has to say. Now, Keane was part of the punditry team on Sky Sports this week for the Manchester derby. And as you'd expect, Keane had plenty of things to say. Talked about the club, the players, Solskjaer, Mourinho, and a hell of a lot more. So what I want to do in this video is run through everything that Keane had to say. I want to critique his points, add my own points onto the issues he raised. And I want to hear from you about what you think of Keane's comments. Now, before we get started, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you go down there, hit that subscribe button, people, get involved. But let's get straight into it. Now, when it comes to this current crop of players at Manchester United, Keane really didn't hold back in his assessment. He does not feel that Solskjaer can trust them at all. These are the same players that threw Marino under the bus, and they will do exactly the same to Oli. Leopards don't change their spots. There's too many bluffers at this club to get United back to the very top. The whole, even the point that we're talking about Man United trying to finish fourth tells you how the standards have dropped at United over the last few years, I think both on and off the pitch. So, um, yeah, big, big test for Ollie as well, of course. Is Kane wrong in what he's saying here? Absolutely not. There are so many bluffers, passengers, comfortable players inside this squad not pulling their weight. And they haven't pulled their weight under Moyes, under Van Howe, under Mourinho, and now under Solskjaer. We really are more passengers United, more than Manchester United. And that is a massive issue. Do I think that Solskjaer can trust them? No, I don't think he can. Certainly not the full squad. And it's not a case of, do I think that the players will throw Solskjaer under the bus, like Keane is suggesting there. But when the chips are down, when times are tough, how many players in this squad have truly stood up and been accounted for? I mean, there's a reason that Matteo Damian made his first start since December against City. There's a reason that Pereira made his first Premier League start since March. It's because he, he trusts these players over others. It's as simple as that. Because he put out his strongest team that he felt he had against Everton to get a result. And what happened there showed Solskjaer that there really is no saving quite a lot of this squad and Keane for me here is spot on to isolate them, point the finger at them because they are the problem. They really genuinely are. Under multiple managers now, we're still having the same issues. Mourinho wasn't the right man to take United forward, but these players, they're certainly not the right players to take United forward either. And that is the major task that Solskjaer has this summer. Getting rid of those players out of the squad that he doesn't trust, that aren't doing it for him, whilst bringing in new players that will play how Solskjaer wants to play and play for him and for the club. And doing both of those at the same time when we still don't even have a technical director in, it goes to show how difficult this summer is going to be for Manchester United. Because player power seemingly has taken over this Manchester United dressing room. And that is a major, major change. That didn't exist when Keane was there. And if there's one player that Keane thinks is at fault for that, Rightly or wrongly, it certainly seems to be Paul Pogba. This is what he had to say about Pogba. I wouldn't believe a word he says. <laughs> Why? There's no, no meaning, no meaning behind it. I, I don't even think I don't even think he believed what he was saying there. He's not about being a teammate. What well, if you're going to be a good teammate? Then you, you got to run back. You got to run back when you're defending. He said it got a bit heated after the game. I think against Everton, I heard they were actually throwing their hair gel at each other. It got that heated. <laughs> so. Um, no, the guy's a talented, talented boy. We're saying the same things over and over again, but the, the, the number of times I've seen him in games where he's not sprinting back or running back. He's talking about body language, throwing his arms up in the air. No, he's a, he's a, he's a big problem. Well, for the a, a problem in what sense? Do you, do you think that he's a bad influence on the rest of the group then, particularly well, the younger I'd, ones here? Well, 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 Graham spoke earlier about you need good examples at your football club. You need senior players. And listen, he's a mature player. He's played in big competitions, he's won big trophies. And I don't think he leads by example, from what I see. Now, obviously, I don't know what he's like around the training ground and when they're travelling. But you're talking about, he mentioned body language and pride. I, I don't see it. I don't see it in his performances. And my eyes don't lie to me. Now, for me here, I think Keane's a bit overly harsh on Pogba. But Pogba plays the transfer market game so well, so perfectly, 
that it makes it hard to trust him. Really hard to trust him as a fan. You know, if he was playing mustard every single week, he'd get far more leeway. But flirting in the transfer market combined with the inconsistency on the pitch creates this sort of toxic environment where Pogba, for me, is hyper-criticised. But that's only because of the high standards he himself has set. And now I stand by the fact that I think Manchester United would be mad to sell Pogba this summer. He is the only truly world-class outfield player we have in this squad. And yes, he's inconsistent, but he's fucking brilliant, man. And we've already got a tough time this summer, let alone getting rid of our best player. But on the other hand, if he doesn't want to be here, a bit like Ronaldo, just let him leave. Sell him, bring in someone else. United will move on without Pod, but if he doesn't want to be here. But if he does, we should absolutely stand behind him. However, there is one thing there that Keane mentions that I absolutely agree with. And it's the idea that Pogba is the example in the dressing room. The player that Lingard, that Rashford, that Lukaku all look up towards. And I don't think he has been that leader that we saw with the French team at the World Cup. I question whether that Pogba has existed in the dressing room. Because if Pogba performs, United perform. But if Pogba doesn't and he has an off day, invariably other players are dragged down with him. Now, that's what a leader does, leads by example and the other players follow. But I do question whether Pogba really has been that character in the dressing room. I haven't been in the dressing room, so I might be completely out of line here. But just from what I've seen, I haven't seen that enough from Pogba. And that's something I absolutely want to see more of if he is still here next season. Now, the next point that Keane discusses is how he feels their standards have absolutely slipped in every department at Manchester United. Well, I think their recruitment has been better over the last number of years. I, I think we've been uh, quite critical of the players and what's going on at Man United, but the recruitment certainly isn't where it should be. I think we, when we were at United, we always felt United were on top of everything. That's what we felt. It maybe it wasn't the case. We felt we were first class on the pitch, off the pitch, people in the background, the scouting, the medical side of things. But I, I just get the impression that United have just slackened off on every aspect. And they've invested heavily over the last few years, but it's not been... A lot of the deals haven't worked out. It's just not happened. Obviously, they've chopped and changed the managers. Um, but the players who've come in, they've just, it's just not happened for a lot of them. And they've invested, obviously, huge transfer fees and huge wages. The sad thing here is that I can't disagree with anything that Keane is saying. And you can see Neville quietly nodding in agreement as well in the idea that United previously to the players just seemed like this perfect club. Everything was first class. Best in recruitment, best manager, best medical staff. Everything was United first and that's why the big players always came. But what, are, what is United now? It's almost like, a, like an adult Disneyland, like full of glitter, full of money. But past the surface, the shiny surface, there's no real substance. And when the club is run as badly as it is, how can we really truly expect the players to not act in a similar fashion? Because the club reflects the players, the players reflects the club. And that's the situation that we've got now. We're almost a parody version of ourselves as a club. And that all points to one thing, which Keane here points out correctly, and that's chaos behind the scenes. Could you tell me what the priority is? Player-wise? Uh, yeah, no. Is it what position? Is that a midfield player? No, I mean, is that a well, defender? Two, the worry for me is that they certainly need a couple of centre-halves and, and two full-backs. That's four for starters. Yeah, but I also worry about who's making the final decision. You get the impression there's a bit of just chaos in the background. I know Ed Woodrow gets a lot of criticism, the scouting department. Will Ollie have the final say over a player? I don't know, because if you speak to the previous managers, I bet you that was a big but, problem. But that's the difference. Keane again here, absolutely spot on. There's nothing else to call it apart from chaos. I mean, look at what happened last summer when Ed Woodward decided to meddle in the transfers with Jose Mourinho, undermined him. From that point, Jose was doomed because he lost his ability to manage his football club because Ed Woodward, the money man, decided he was more astute in the transfer market. Now, that's going to happen to Solskjaer again this summer unless the club changes its structure because Ed Woodward needs to get his greasy mitts away from any footballing decisions. But the sad thing is, I question whether that is ever going to be the case. Because us fans in the last six years, it's been utter chaos. On the pitch, off the pitch, United just falling apart. But the Glazers, 
they're having dinner parties. The last six years, the club's gone up in value. They've been taking dividends out. As far as the Glazers are concerned, United is in a stronger position than it ever has been because our on the pitch performances have not really affected the value of the club. And that's where my concern lies in the idea that what might be chaos to fans isn't chaos to the owners. And until those two things align, how can the same outcome come of it? Because we both seemingly want different things. But until Woodward steps away and a proper modern football club structure is implemented at United, this chaos will just continue. And Keane is absolutely right to call it that because it's utter chaos. Bad management from top to bottom. And what top player would want to walk into that environment? As Keane points out, probably none. And also, which players, which t brilliant players out there that are available will want to come to United if they don't well, finish? United will United always attract players. Graham, I, I, I always thought that when I was a player and up to the last two years, if I ever spoke to a player who had a chance to go to Man United, I would say, you've got to go to Man United. I don't care what. Brilliant club, absolutely brilliant club. But you're on about players now wanting to win the big prizes. You look at Man United, if you're a top player, you will not want to come to Man United because there's better options out there in terms of winning trophies. Yeah, I think, I think Roy, what I want to pick up with Roy just saying there, I agree. I always thought that Manchester United would be able to attract the best players. I still have that feeling. But Real Madrid and Zidane are looking to sign six players this summer. Bayern Munich are an old team and looking mm. to sign five or six players. These are great clubs, let's be clear about that. So there's not just but Manchester so United. This. Yeah, I, I so absolutely this. agree. But Manchester United are in the market with Real Madrid and Bayern Munich at the moment to try and sign the same players. Manchester City want players. Arsenal need players. Chelsea, they all want players. And that's the big problem that it's not just Manchester United that are needing to rebuild. There's other great clubs as well that are actually trying to do it at the same time. Again, really hard to disagree with what Keane has to say here. Because United can throw more money at players than most clubs. Look what happened with Alexis Sanchez. He was going City until we decided to offer him the most ridiculous wages in the world. But that has created the culture which is the problem at the club. The players are there for money more than anything. We laughed at Chelsea for years for being a bunch of mercenaries, but I would argue United right now we have a bunch of mercenaries in this squad. Not everybody, not every single player. I'm not doing a sweeping statement, but there are plenty who you could point the finger at for just being here for the cash. And until that culture changes, Solskjaer's going to struggle. Struggle to bring in the right players for the right reasons at the right price. And it's just an accumulation of problems at United. But I would question why any top player would come to United, especially when the likes of Bayern Munich Real Madrid, Barcelona, all the big clubs, they want the big players too. I think the reality is United have an almost impossible task in this upcoming summer transfer window, especially without a good technical director in there with experience in the market, because we are competing with the elite clubs that can offer better chances of trophies next season, but we have to bring people in that are excited about the project of United, because that's what we are again now. We're another project. We're another club that's looking two years down the line for when we can compete because it can't be next year. And because as Gary Neville points out, this United squad, it's simply not good enough. I think United, I think United played a decent game. I think United, to be fair, I, I think that's as good as United have got. It's about one shot and target, Gary. I know, but I think that's as good as they've got. One shot and target at home. I know, but I think that's that, that's that team. What, oh, what, right. what we saw there tonight between Manchester United and Manchester City was the golfing class between the two teams. I think that's everything United have got. I think that, I don't think I looked at any player on that pitch and thought they could have given more. That's what they are. I mean, yeah, De Gea, to be fair, you know, he's not normally like you need this. To see Fred, you need to see Fred for the second goal, then. If you're on about players... But I think that's what he's been since he come. But that's, not, think giving, he's a that's not giving you all. You're saying they gave it all. That's, that, that's cheating. That's what, what, what he's done is cheating. <laughs> Letting the guy run off him. <laughs> I think that's what he is. I think, to be fair, he's a defensive-wise. He'll skip into challenges. He'll, he'll get beat. And he'll, people will go past him. Sometimes he'll win it. Sometimes he won't. And for me, watching Fred all season, he commits himself into challenges. He gets skipped past and he can't get back. He can't recover. He's not got the legs. I think that's what he is. I, 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 there's nothing I've seen tonight from United that makes me think they could have given more. They could have, yeah, not made some mistakes. But that's the best they've got, I think. And again, Gary is right here. Up against the elite-level clubs, your Barcelonas, your Man Cities. United just fall short. You have to hold your hands up and say they're on a different footballing level to us. And for that to change, United have to change everything. Better recruitment, 
better attitude in the dressing room, new leaders, technical directors, new structure in the club. And for Solskjaer to get it right this summer, all of that has to come together. Not one thing, because signing a couple of players isn't going to solve United's problems. It's a systemic issue that goes throughout the whole veins of the club. And until it's all resolved at the same time, nothing will truly change at United. That is what scares me the most, and that is the big task that Solskjaer somehow has to contend with this summer. But what do you think about Roy Keane's comments and Gary Neville's comments here before and after the defeat against City in the derby? Let me know what you think about them in the comments. Plenty are harsh, but I think plenty as well are absolutely spot on and the honest truth about what United is as a football club right now. But I really want to hear from you in the comments as always, so make sure you get them down in the comments section. If you are new to United People's TV and you're still here and you enjoyed the video, just drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time though, take it easy.